Harlem, New York, has a rich history of being a social and artistic place for black artists. During this time, hundreds of notable artists were in the city at the same time, and many of them have crossed paths, even the ones that you never would have expected, including political leader Malcolm X and stand-up comedian Red Fox. Corey Zuman Miller, and here's a story that you should know. Malcolm X was in Harlem the same time as Red Fox, who was trying to make a name for himself as a stand-up comedian. Knowing what we know about Malcolm now, it's shocking to see how these two polar opposites were once friends. Red Fox was born John Elroy Sanford in December 1922. In the early 30s, Sanford moved to Chicago from St. Louis along with his brother and mom. While in Chicago, Sanford gained the performance bug after joining a band called The Four Bon Bons. At the age of 16, Sanford dropped out of high school and decided to move to New York with the rest of his bandmates for a chance to make it big. The band changed their name to The Jump Swinging Six. Sanford started out singing. According to him, he soon realized that he was the funny looking one within his group, so he started to tell jokes. The group broke up after appearing on national radio somewhere in the late 30s. While in Harlem, Sanford got a job at Jimmy's Chicken Shack, where he would meet and become close friends with Malcolm Little. At the time, he was called Detroit Red. Both Little and Sanford had similar beginnings. Sanford had come from Chicago to Harlem, while Malcolm came from Detroit. Both came from tough environments and eventually became hustlers together. The two had a lot in common. So it isn't difficult to see why the two were always together. They were both sharp dressers and they had similar red hair. In the book, Black and Blue, the Red Fox story, Sanford said, uh, Malcolm was about the same color as me. Uh, you can hardly tell us apart. We both had those conks and, and our hair was red with a high pompadour. And we had them zoot suit pants, uh, just like uh, the high drape pants uh, Billie Holiday used to sing about in her blues. We became good buddies in a speakeasy, where later on I was a waiter. Chicago Red was the funniest dishwasher on earth. Now, he's making his living being funny at a nationally known stage and nightclub comedian. I don't see any reason why old Chicago Red would mind me telling that he is Red Fox. The two worked at Jimmy's Chicken Shack in Harlem during the day and hustled the street together at night. They used to rob places together and sleep on rooftops together. Sanford said that he knew Malcolm had his back and he trusted him. Sanford told this piece of information to Anthony Major who used to run Red Fox Productions in the mid-1980s. If Sanford was in a fight, he could turn his back and know Malcolm was going to be on the other side fighting with him. They stole suits and they resold them, dealt marijuana, other petty crimes, all together. Uh, when we got a job at Jimmy's Chicken Shack, uh, we had all kinds of hustles going on. It, it was a business joint uptown and, and we made a little extra side bread up in the checks and so forth. Sanford also admitted that he sold many zoot suits and he and Malcolm stole from a nearby laundry business. They usually sold them on top of the same rooftops where they slept. We'd sell one or two of them a day uh, uh, on the rooftop and we never got caught for that. <laughs> I guess that balanced out some of the stuff that I had to pay for later on that I didn't do. Sanford further reflected on their time together and he shared how neither one of them at the time was into politics. I remember one time Malcolm and I joined the Communist Party. Uh, maybe not joined it, but signed something or other because they, they had white broads and food, and I ain't had no food in about two weeks. You dance with these chicks, smell the perfume, and eat the sandwiches. Just couldn't avoid being a part of things like that because it was food, man. Stacked high cake and lemonade, even bologna. You could put your pocket full of bologna. I'd have joined the Ku Klux Klan if they had sandwiches. After running together for some time, Malcolm ended up getting himself into more trouble making larger robberies and using harder drugs. Fox decided to distance himself from Malcolm Moore, although the two were never on bad terms. Uh, Malcolm didn't have the showbiz talent, so he didn't, you know, he didn't give a goddamn what, what he got into. He'd take on anything to get some dough. He was a little bit more aggressive, but I, I'd rather be sleeping with a broad and, and, and go somewhere to a club and do 15 minutes of comedy than, you know, all of that. After going their separate ways, Sanford continued to perform stand-up throughout the city. He caught a break when a nightclub in Baltimore needed an MC. While in Baltimore, Sanford changed his name to what we all know him as right now, Red Fox. Malcolm, on the other hand, continued to follow a life of crime, and he would end up getting arrested for burglary 
and is sentenced to 10 years in prison. While in prison, Malcolm educated himself by reading books on race, religion, history, literature, biology, and linguistics. He converted to Islam and began to follow the nation's principles led by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. In prison, Malcolm Little changes his name to Malcolm X. After going their separate ways, it would be 20 years before Fox and Malcolm would ever reunite. A photo had captured the two together after spending time apart. It's unclear whether this was the last time the two would see each other before Malcolm's assassination in 1965. It's fascinating to see these two figures had an impact on each other's lives before they became household names. Before John Sanford was Red Fox and before Malcolm Little was Malcolm X, the two were simply trying to make a name for themselves during their humble beginnings.